Good morning. Join me in welcoming Ocean Division Commander, Brigadier General Jeffrey L. Milhorn, Colonel Stokey's wife, Tracy, and his parents, Lewis and Donna Lestokey, and Colonel Brooks' wife, Dina. The 9th Army Arctic Warrior Band will also participate in today's ceremony. The Color Guard is provided by 6th Brigade Engineer Battalion Airborne, 4th Infantry Brigade Combat Team Airborne, 25th Infantry Division, under the direction of Command Sergeant Major Boyce. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the presentation of colors, playing of our national anthem, and invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Harrison, the Fort Richardson Garrison Chaplain. Let me pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day, and I ask for your presence with us as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Alaska District changes command. You have blessed this organization through Colonel Ustoki and I ask that you bless him and his family as they continue to serve. I also ask that you continue to honor this organization through Colonel Brooks. Grant him wisdom and insight to lead and fill him and his wife Dina with endurance for command that they and the district may be honored and lauded through your name, I pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. As is the custom of the military, a bouquet of flowers is presented to the wife of the incoming and outgoing commander, a small token of the unit's appreciation for their support. Red roses are given to Mrs. Tracy Lestoki by Master Sergeant Brown, representing the color of the heart, giving her loving concern that she has shown for our employees and their families for the past, past three years. Her roses symbolizing the beauty and fulfillment of her time with the district as our First Lady.
Yellow roses are being presented to Mrs. Dina Brooks by Sergeant, Gar Sergeant First Class Garcia Pena. They are the traditional color of welcome. The flowers represent the anticipation of wonderful things to come for the district. The change of command is a time-honored custom dating back to the Roman Empire. The ceremony is simple, yet rich in history and tradition. The United States Army adopted the custom of passing the colors when General George Washington assumed command of the Continental Army in Boston on July 3, 1775. Each military unit has a flag or colors that represents the unit. Historically, the color served as a focal point in unit for the unit in battle and guided the unit's direction of movement. Throughout the years, the flag has remained and has become a cherished symbol for each unit. With the transfer, the unit's legacy is symbolically passed. The passing of the unit's colors emphasize that even though the commander may change, the organization itself is constant. The unit command sergeant major who represents the unit initiates the change of command by passing the flag of, and the authority. Once the flag has been passed to the outgoing commander, he in turn passes it to his superior, the source of his authority. In this case, the division commander will then in turn entrust the flag to the incoming commander, symbolizing, symbolizing the transfer of authority and responsibility. The flag is then returned to the command sergeant major, completing the change of command. At this time, the commanders will take their places for the traditional changing of the colors and passing of the flag. Command Sergeant Major Boyce will pass the going commander for the last time. Colonel Stokey will then pass the to Brigadier General Milhorn, signifying a successful completion of command. Brigadier General Milhorn will pass the colors to Colonel Brooks, charging him with responsibility for the unit as its new commander. And finally, Colonel Brooks will pass the colors back to Command Sergeant Major Boyce, thus completing the change of command. By authority of Army Regulation 600-200, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Engineer District, Alaska, signed Michael S. Brooks, Colonel, Engineer, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, Brigadier General Jeffrey L. Milhorn. <clears throat> well, good morning to everyone, to all of our distinguished guests, which there are so many, and uh, I hesitate to try to call everybody out by name for fear of causing uh, a rift by not recognizing everyone, but there are so many distinguished guests here today. To family, friends and veterans of the Alaska District. Welcome to the change of command ceremony uh, between Colonel Chris Lestoke and Colonel Michael Brooks. And for those that aren't familiar with the change of command ceremony, this day certainly would not have been possible without extraordinary support from so many people, both represented here on the field today and some that may not be here today. And I'd ask uh, certainly from the Conner Guard, from the 6th Brigade Engineer Battalion, 4th Brigade, 25th Infantry Division, the 9th Army Band from U.S. Army Alaska, and to all those who supported this event, if you all would please join me in a round of applause for all. <laughs> Absolutely a momentous occasion, both for the outgoing and the incoming commanders. Well, changes of command are also anxious moments. They can be anxious for the outgoing commander, in a way that he's asking himself, did I accomplish everything that I tried to achieve in the three years that I've served in this capacity? And Chris, I will tell you emphatically, no, you haven't. Uh, 
That's why he's coming to Hawaii to be my deputy commander for, uh, for as long as I can hold on to him. But absolutely you have, and I'm, I'm absolutely proud of everything. And I'll talk to some of your accomplishments. And for, uh, for Mike, similarly, you know, as he takes on the mantle, the responsibility of leading these true professionals, this organization for the command period that he is in for the next three years, Similarly, he's probably looking for that notebook that he's been taking copious notes in over the last few days of transition. But I'll tell you, Mike, you don't need to worry about it because you're surrounded by professionals and expertise. And, uh, and last but not least, if, uh, if there is anybody to blame, you can always blame the outgoing commander, uh, which I know Chris will refute and blame Randy Bowker instead. So. All joking aside, this is a very special day for both families. As uh, Chris is joined today uh, with his wife Tracy and his parents, Don and Lou, Don and Lou, um, from uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and we're also blessed to have Dina join us from Colorado Springs as, as she supports her husband in this new adventure. Today is a day to reflect on the accomplishments under the leadership of the outgoing commander, Chris Lestoki of which he could not have accomplished without so many people, many of which are standing in the audience here today. And, but it's worth reiterating some of the things that you've accomplished over the last three years since you took command on July 2nd, 2012. But again, riding on the shoulders of giants for those who carried you forth and, and, and accomplished all that you set out to achieve. Chris inherited this organization three years ago, just more than three years ago, during a time when there was a, an imbalance between the workload and the workforce, which oftentimes would result in what we would refer to as a reduction in force, but that didn't occur. He did everything he could to muster the talents within the organization and seek opportunities that would take this to greater height, take the organization to greater heights, and he did exactly that. There was no reductions under his command. There have been changes. We have tailored the organization to meet the future but he didn't tailor through a reduction in force. He coined the catchphrase, fab, faster, affordable, and better, to be more responsive to all of our partners and stakeholders within the region, and really to become the trusted engineer of choice based on how fast we could respond, how affordable we were trying to become, how better we are, to meet the needs of those whom we support wherever they are, whenever they needed it. He provided job training for wounded warriors within the organization who are transitioning to the civilian workforce. He partnered with engineer tactical units, broadening the opportunities of NCOs and officers from across all components, active, reserves, and the Alaska National Guard. He served as a senior Army engineer for multiple staffs, not only for the Pacific Command in Honolulu, but also for the Northern Command in Colorado Springs, and locally in support of Alaska Command Lieutenant General Handy, and most recently, US, U.S. Army Alaska with a transition that just recently occurred between Major General Shields and Major General Owens. He started what's known as a STEM program, a science, technology, engineering, and mathematics focus modeled after a program that is highly successful at West Point, New York. The district also responded to numerous emergencies within the region. Many of you will recall the flooding that occurred in Galena in 2013, and a year ago, how we mitigated through the operation of the dam at Chena Lake any damage that could have been suffered by Fairbanks, and that was done again this time last year. With regard to overseas contingency operations, he has deployed the Ford Engineer Support Team, the 62nd FEST, to both Iraq and Afghanistan in the last three years. He's also modeled what I think is one of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' best international and interagency programs, designed to provide humanitarian assistance and disaster relief across the Indo-Asia Pacific region in places like Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos, Bangladesh, Mongolia, um, and India. We're currently building schools, clinics, blood banks, deep water, water, deep water fusion, and uh, deep water wells 
throughout those regions, training centers, partnering with USAID and the Office for U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance, and certainly the Department of State. We're completing work in India as we speak through foreign military sales and the development of, an, a, I believe, most recently, a taxiway and ramp in support of those efforts. Locally, completion of a boat harbor in Akutan, the breakwater in Sitka, stormwater protection wall in Unaklit. We have an upcoming chief's report for Little Dimey. Not yet signed. It was supposed to be done under your leadership. Now we're passing that one on to Mike. But we'll get it done. And it's through all the efforts of this team that that has been so successful. I have to also highlight some of the environmental and the regulatory efforts through the environmental clean at, cleanup at Uniat Testwell 9 on the North Slope, formerly used defense sites on Northeast Cape and St. Lawrence Island, numerous military construction efforts at Eilison, Fort Wainwright, and certainly here at Joint, El Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson. We also issued two large oil and gas field permits, one at Point Thompson and the other at Great Moose's Tooth. You've established invaluable relationships wherever you've been across the Indo-Asia Pacific region with the U.S. ambassadors and their country teams. And as I mentioned again, with our teammates from the Department of Defense, no matter what agency, Department of State, the USAID, and again, the Office for Foreign, U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance. Domestically and internationally, our interagency partnerships, partnerships have strengthened because of your efforts. And so have the campaign plans in support of Pacific Command and Northern Command. Again, just a few of the many accomplishments that have occurred over the last three years under Chris Lestoki's leadership. And to Chris and Tracy, in Hawaii we say mahalo nui loa, which means thank you very much. I look forward to embracing you and welcoming you in Hawaii as my deputy commander in just less than two weeks. And for those that need to know where they're staying, you can meet me off to the sideline if you need to place a crash in Waikiki. With his passing, we have a transition as was described. The colors exchanged. The, the organization remains the same, though the leadership has changed effective now. And with that, as was described with the exchange of the colors, the opportunity to build on the unit's legacy and contribute to future performance objectives and heroic achievements will now be led by Colonel Michael Brooks. Mike, we welcome, well, warmly welcome you and Dina to our family and this team. We know that the Army got it absolutely right in selecting you to command at this time, and I'm absolutely confident that you will lead the way in this great organization of professionals and tremendous expertise. We're exceptionally honored to have you join us both from Colorado Springs. Mike previously served in the J36 staff in Northern Command, and uh, he's not, he is, uh, he does have some experience uh, with the Corps. This is not his first assignment as he served previously as a de deputy district commander at, uh, in Detroit. So he brings that to bear. So for all that thought he was coming in blind, he isn't. <laughs> and I'm confident, again, that you will lead this organization. And I'm tremendously proud to, uh, to have you join our team, not only here in the Alaska District, but the Pacific Ocean Division. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all very much for attending. SA Ons, Army Strong, Building Strong. Ladies and gentlemen, the former commander of the Alaska District, Colonel Christopher D. Listoki. Brigadier General Milhorn, distinguished guests, friends and members of the Alaska District team, thank you all for being here today. Uh, before I get going, I want to recognize some of the people that put all this together. Uh, first, thank, thanks to the soldiers of, of 425. Um, your presence here as a color guard really adds something special to, to a ceremony like this. Likewise, to the Ninth Army Band, you're all doing fantastic. Thank you for being here. Chaplain, thanks, thanks for your prayers. 
Uh, finally, I want to recognize all the people that put in long hours making our headquarters look great and for setting up this ceremony. So speeches like this, uh, at least for the outgoing commander, are all about gratitude and appreciation. This one will be no different. Uh, I want to start off today by speaking about my, my family first. I'm fortunate to have my mother and father here today, and really, they've been there for me every step of the way. I believe that what I've been able to achieve in life is because of the way they raised me. So thanks, Mom, Dad, uh, for being here now and for everything you've done for me. Next, I want to thank my boys, Corey and Anthony. And you may not have noticed, but uh, they're not here today, um, which is perfectly understandable because they're, they're busy making their way in, in this world. But I want to point out that, that my boys, like all military children, sacrifice just as much as the service member. You see it with the frequent moves, the changes in schools, new friends, constant uncertainty about deployments. They adapted to this way of life, and they're fine young men now whose parents are very proud and grateful for what they've become. Last but not least, my bride of 25 years and two days. Uh, <laughs> this is our second tour in Alaska. And she's about, about to undertake our 18th move in 25 years. Uh, she's the mother of my children, who essentially raised them since I was gone so often. She endured a lot and sacrificed much in all those years. She put her career on hold so I could chase my dream here in Alaska. I couldn't have done it without you, and I wouldn't want to. Would everybody please join me in a round of applause for my wife, Tracy. Even though it's easy to forget at times, family is the most important thing in this world, and I am so grateful that I have one. Sir, thank you for the kind words about all that was accomplished over the last three years. Um, I, of course, didn't do any of that, um, but the Corps did. You know, behind me is, is the, the Corps' flag. Um, on that flag is a castle, and that castle is our brand. It means quality, it means innovation, it means safety, it means finding engineer solutions for the nation's toughest challenges. All of that is accomplished by people, and they're the ones who deserve the credit. It's absolutely, absolutely amazing what this team of, professional team of professionals accomplishes every day, often without any great fanfare. The project managers manage projects from cradle to grave, some of these projects last decades and involve teams of engineers. Others, like on much of our humanitarian assistance program in Asia, are projects executed by teams of one. Right now, we have people all over Asia representing the Corps, our Army, and in some cases, in the more remote locations, they represent the United States. We also have folks like Ron Toombs, who runs our missile defense construction program for Missile Field 1 up at Greeley and uh, our radar projects up at Clear. You know, recently, the, the chief, of, chief of engineers was seriously considering trying to poach him in order to put him onto some of the other NDA programs in other parts of the world. We have engineers known nationally for their expertise. Folks like Ken Isis from our hydraulics and hydrology section. People turn to him to gain an understanding of the impacts of coastal erosion and what to do about it. We have similar expertise when it comes to Arctic engineering and Arctic construction. We have engineers and architects representing all the disciplines needed to design and build everything from buildings to breakwaters. We have folks working right now on building a small boat harbor in Valdez and others studying the feasibility of building a deep draft port in Nome. We have folks like Ron Broyles, Ken Andreshko, Bob Brock, Lisa Geis that oversee the environmental cleanup program of formerly used defense sites and similar, uh, similar projects on, on federal properties. In a lot of cases, these are in some of the most remote parts of the states, everywhere from Nuvaka Pack to St. Lawrence Island down to Adak, all the way down to southeast Alaska. In construction, we have quality assurance reps and project engineers that steadfastly enforce standards on some of the most complex projects you can come up with. We have folks like Tom or Tim Feeble, who leads the team that operates and maintains the Moose Creek Dam on, on the Chena River. And few people know that that team's effort last year really did save 
Fairbanks multiple times from devastating floods. There are people like Julie Anderson, who runs the maintenance dredging program throughout coastal Alaska and is the go-to person for the dredging that keeps the port of Anchorage open year-round. We have the best contracting team in the Corps, and they're responsible for building and administering the contracting tools we need to do our work. People like Alden Graham, who figure out the right way to apply a contracting solution to a difficult cha uh, challenge rather than just saying, no, it can't be done. Our regulators, they're responsible for balancing reasonable development with the duty to protect the aquatic resources of the United States. These professionals work quietly on literally thousands of permit actions every year. It doesn't matter if it's a small project or the large gas fields like at Point Thompson or, or GMT-1 on the slope. There are regulators doing hard analysis in order to make the recommendations needed for a permit decision. We have people like Ben Soswift, Leslie Toe, Deb McTee, who coordinated and developed the new Placer Mining General Permit in partnership with our state and federal uh, colleagues and with input from the public and industry. It's not easy and it's often a thankless job, but extremely important to this state and our nation. Behind the scenes is a team of support staff that keeps all of those divisions running. Resource managers who look after money and the budgets, a safety office who administers the best safety program in the Corps four years in a row. We have Office of Counsel, PAO, Emergency Management, Logistics, IT, and the admin support staff. The point of all of this is that it takes all of these people to execute a complex program like the one we have here in Alaska, and I am grateful that I've been associated with these people. I have to thank my front office for keeping my schedule straight, coordinating all that correspondence and all my travel, and being the true gatekeepers. Thank you, Debbie, Diane, and Mary Beth. And of course, there's my EA, Jackie, Mama Bear. <laughs> uh, she not only oversees the front office, but she really does have the pulse of the district and has a passion for the people that belong to it. Thanks to all of you. The senior leaders in charge of all these organi organizations are themselves experts in their field, and, and they really do work so well together. I owe thanks and gratitude to those like Randy Bowker, Pat Coolahan, Dave Freer, Chris Tu, Dave Hobby, Karen Farmer, and Mike Gilbert. They are the brain trust of the district, and they were my trusted agents over the last three years. Now, I can go on and on and, you know, with the names of every employee in the district and, and tell you how they make a difference but I did promise my wife that I'd keep the speech under 95 minutes. Really, I only got about five more minutes. Um, up to this point, uh, I've described the civilian personnel in the Alaska District, but there is a military component as well. First and foremost are my deputies, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Bobby Stone and now Lieutenant Colonel Rock DeRocky. Both are great officers that I've had the, the privilege of knowing for many years and served with in multiple assignments. I couldn't have asked for finer officers to assist me with command and to command in my absence. For the rest of the officers and NCOs in the district, the first tour in the district is a broadening opportunity and, and typically a developmental assignment for a young officer and NCO. In every case, each of these officers and NCOs, in every case, brought a willingness to learn, a commitment to the organization and its mission, and most importantly, they brought enthusiasm. And that enthusiasm is contagious. All of these soldiers inspire those with whom they serve. Thanks to all of you. Now, I've talked about our military, and there's less than 20 of those. In our Department of Defense, uh, our Department of the Army civilians, there's less than 400 of them. Uh, but on any given day, we have between 1 and 3,000 contractors working on our projects around Alaska and throughout Asia. The reality is we, we could not accomplish this mission without our contractors. These are companies like any other businesses with a goal of making money, but they're very skilled at what they do, and they're very proud of what they do. They're patriotic too, and then they know what they build is hugely important to our military, this state, and our nation. This entire team, civilian, military, contractor, they execute the mission, but this mission is not accomplished in a vacuum or in isolation. We rely on our partners and stakeholders, and I'd like to recognize some of them. For our military partners, the installation commanders, the base civil engineers, the directors of public works, and their staffs. Our federal partners like the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Coast Guard, EPA, NOAA, Department of Energy, and the Denali Commission. State agencies like Department of Transportation, DNR, DEC. 
and also the cities, the towns, and the village leadership. I've enjoyed working with all of you and appreciate the collaboration as we work towards common goals when our interests align. You know, through all of this, I've had the great privilege of calling many of you out there my friends. And just a, a quick story. You know, back in 1999, then Captain and Mrs. Listoki came off the, the Alcan Highway in their Jeep Grand Cherokee after 14 days on the road with two small kids, one in diapers. We were just trying to find lodging where we're going to live. So we checked into our hotel, wondering, you know, what is this Alaska experience going to be like? So we come into the room, and there's a basket on, on the table. It's from the Great Harvest Bread Company. And I open up the refrigerator, and there's a six-pack of Alaska Amber in there, and a little card saying, welcome to Alaska. Welcome to the Army Corps of Engineers. Signed, Lieutenant Colonel Terlides. You know, and that really, that, that experience really set the tone for us. And it's, it's one of the reasons why we wanted to come back to Alaska. And it's no different right now. People like Mark Kelleher, Ron Flodine, Jackie Fabrizio, Claire Yeager, Rich Jingris, the former district commanders that live here, Tim Gallagher, Bill Cakel, all of our Army and Air Force friends that we've made. The list goes on and on. The Listoki family are much better people for having known all of you, and we thank you for that. So now it's, it's time to say farewell to my friends and colleagues. My final message to the district is to continue the mission. We went through some tough times over the last few years. Budget cuts, furloughs, heck, we, we did almost go through a riff. There were times, I'm sure, where folks felt that everything they were worth was under attack. But you have heart, and you carried on. We've made some sacrifices, but we're in a position now to thrive in spite of the uncertainty that's still in front of us. Under Colonel Brooks' command, I'm sure you will take this district to an even better place. You know, three, three years sounds like a long time for a command, but for me it went by far too quickly, and I wish I could have stayed longer. I'm fortunate, though, because in my new capacity as the Deputy Commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, I will be in a position to look out for Alaska, and believe me, I will. I wish you all the very best, and again, thank you all for, for joining us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, the Alaska District Commander, Colonel Michael S. Brooks. Uh, General Melhorn, distinguished guests and friends, uh, thank you for attending today's ceremony. You notice my smile is very big. Chris says it's probably not, so thanks, Chris. Um, I'd like to thank the color guard from 6BB. You look awesome. Uh, the Arctic Warrior Band sound great. Um, and to the people behind the scenes that put this on, but also the employees and the families that prepared the food for the Wild Game Feast, thank you. And I know the last thing between you guys and food is my speech, so it will be quick. <laughs> um, I'd really like to thank Chris. Um, such a warm welcome. He re reached out to me about a year ago, and he started giving me uh, specifics on the missions in January. So. Um, He's made the transition very easy, and I do thank you a lot. He also gave me a cell phone number, so I can phone a friend, and trust me, I'll, I'll be calling you. Um, I've met the majority of the district uh, already over the past two weeks, and I truly uh, feel blessed. Uh, this is an amazing team, and I uh, can't wait for the journey ahead, and I'm proud to be a part of the team. Um, in closing, uh, I'd like to thank my wife, Dina. She, she makes so many sacrifices so I can be a commander, so thanks. So, all uh, policies and procedures are still in effect. The 27th commander of the Alaska District signing in, S.C. Ohms. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the Army song and the retirement of the colors. The words are located in your program.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain in place for the departure of the official party. On behalf of the commander of the Pacific Ocean Division, we wish to thank you for your attendance at today's change of command. Colonel and Mrs. Listoki will receive friends and well wishes at the end of the sidewalk. Colonel and Mrs. Brooks will be standing at the front of the walkway here for the receiving line. Please form a line to your left. You are invited to join a reception hosted by Colonel and Mrs. Brooks under the tent to your right. The music provided by the 9th Army Band for the reception is under the direction of Sergeant First Class Hitchman. Thank you for attending today.